Yes. Wow. What a wonderful day. All right, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that you are good. I am good. Good afternoon. Good day. Good evening. Good morning. Um, welcome to our storyline on how to treat your dream. And today, I want to tell you a story. Please permit me to tell you. Um, this story is about Sister Fable. Sister Fable, a beautiful lady in her 30s, living in a wonderful estate. One day, she found herself in a dream. And in her dream, she was riding her car to work. And then on the way going, it started drizzling. There's rain, showering, a little shower of rain. Um, by the roadside, she saw Brother Daniel. Brother Daniel, a young man, also living at the same estate with Sister Fable. Um, then beckoned on her, and she stopped to give Mr. Brother Daniel a lift. On the way driving, in that dream, suddenly she found that the dream changed and became a wedding for her. And she, guess who she was wedding to? So she was having a glorious wedding with Brother Daniel, the brother that she uh, took in the car. And um, she woke up. You are welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Femi Ritual, Pastor Femi Ritual. Uh, my, my aim is to show you how to treat your dream. I just told you that of uh, Sister Fable. Those of us who have watched this telecast before will have watched part one. It was about Sister Nkechi, who said dream does not mean anything. But at the end of the day, we we'll found that there is no ordinary dream. When you have your dream, all you need to do is to take action. Today, our discussion is going to be after that dream, what next? What next is what I want to show you. I want to show you some persons in the Bible that have taken the, the hard dreams, and I will show you what they did, and I will show you one or two persons in our contemporary time that had dreams, night dream I'm talking about. Don't forget, a dream is a spiritual information given by God to mankind that it may guide us publicly or personally. Right now, we have told us the first time that how to treat your dream, number one, is to uh, speak to your dream immediately after you come out of the dream. Speak to it, talk to your dream, speak to your dream, say the word of God to it, and if it's a negative dream, reverse it by the word of God. If it's a positive dream, um, speak to it and pray and believe that it will come to pass. In today's meeting, let me quickly read two or three lines of the Word of God for us. And then, because I'm going to be using the Bible, you will see how persons who are dream, what they do with their dream, and then we will agree to do our own also. Genesis chapter number 28 is my number one example. And I read in verse 12, verse 18 and 19. Verse 12, And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven, and behold, the angel of God ascending and descending on it. And Jacob rose up in the morning, and that's verse number 18 now. Verse number 18, and Jacob rose up in the morning, and took the stones that he had put for his pillow, and set it off for, for a pillar, and poured oil upon the top of it. Verse 19, and he said, he called the name of the place Bethel, but the name of that city was called Lucy at the first. Amen. Now listen, Jacob was traveling outside his father's house. And he was running, it came to night, and she found herself, uh, he found himself not able to go on the journey because it was evening. And so because of that, he had to rest himself on a particular stone. Hello. So, he has to make sure that he rests on a particular stone. And on that stone, 
they had a dream where there was a ladder and angels were going up and down. And on the top, he said he saw God in a dream. When he woke up in the morning, he decided that those pillars, that those stones that he used, he will convert them to um, pillars. Then he anointed the pillar and called the place belt. He took an action. He immediately he woke up from the dream. He didn't postpone. He didn't say, oh, it's just an ordinary dream. In fact, he said, the Bible said, he said, why? He was afraid. This place is a very terrible place. God is here. And then he decided to gather the stones together and make a pillar. All of us understand what's a pillar. A pillar can be as long as possible. So he made a pillar. Are we together? So that's the first person that had a dream. Jacob had a dream, and he made it after the dream, he built up a pillar. All right, number two is um, Judges chapter 7. There was a time these guys want to go to war, and then they do not know what to do. Someone has a dream. Judges chapter number 7, uh, verse 13 to 16. Uh, when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow, and said, Behold, I dream a dream, and lo, a cake of barley, bread, tumbled into the host of Midian, and came unto a tent, and smote it, that it fell, and overturned it, that the tent lay along. Verse 14. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else, save the sword of Gideon, and the son of Doas, a man of Israel, for into his hand, God had delivered Midian and all the hosts. Now, someone had a dream. It was not Gideon. And he was telling his friend, see, I saw this dream. And a belt of bread, a cake of bread, stumbled uh, on the host and destroyed the bread, ordinary bread. How can bread fall on soldiers and they will die? And that's a dream. And someone interpreted that it was Gideon's sword that was going to destroy the Midian. And the Bible says in verse number 15, Judges 7, verse number 13 to 16, I am in verse 15 now. And it was so, when Gideon heard it, the telling of the dream, and interpretation thereof, that he worshipped and returned to the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord had delivered unto your hand the host of Midian. Praise the Lord. Now, that telling you that immediately Gideon was not the one that had the dream. Remember, the title is after that dream. What do you do? The right answer is take action. Now, Gideon had a dream about the case that is going on. And then someone had a dream. And interpretation was given. And while Gideon was hearing that interpretation, he knew that God has given victory. And he decided to call on the soldiers. And they went for that war. The story is that they won. Are we, ready? Are we, are we together? Praise the Lord. Maybe you are watching the telecast. You are saying, I have been dreaming. Yes, you may have been dreaming, and you have not been treating your dream. I have said before the first part that the trouble you are now is a result of the accumulated dreams that were untreated. You just woke up in the morning, you sleep and woke up, and then God gave you a revelation in your dream of what to do. You say, ah, is, is it not a dream? I shared with you last week, those who carelessly say, is it not a dream? And what has happened to them even now and then? Now, um, I want to show the last example before we we now look at um, temporary our contemporary time. What you must you do? I am concerned with your dream. The, ble the blessedness of your life now, it most time results from how much of your good dreams you have managed. If you check a lot of great men around, you will hear them say, I had a dream 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. I followed it up. Today they are great men and women. Can we go together? Now, let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 2, verse 13 and 22. God was going to give a dream that required an action. Matthew chapter 2, verse 13, and I read, When they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in the dream, and saying, Arise, take and take the, the young child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and be, da be, be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. And verse number 14, and when he arose, he took the young child 
and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. That's another wonderful action. Joseph uh, woke up from a dream when Jesus was newly born, and God told him in that dream, take this child and the mother out of this country. Herod is looking for the child. He's going to kill him. And when Jacob woke, Joseph woke up in the morning, he didn't ask God whether it's going to be true or not. He didn't even have any other kids than to have faith in the dream that he had. And the Bible says he took the wife and Jesus out of that land in the night and they went to Egypt. Maybe you are listening to me. You are saying, what are you saying, man of God? I am saying that you need to take your dream serious. God has asked me to tell you, watching the telecast, that the reason you are suffering what you are suffering now, if you check back, you will find that the dream has been given to you. You did not manage it. If you check what you, I am doing now, it came from a revelation in the past. And I am speaking to you now. It's not by mistake. And you are listening to me now. It's also not by mistake. Are we together? Let's take the last revelation. Now information that can guide us. Remember after that dream, what do you do? The right answer is take action. Take immediate action. And you say, what if I have taken one action? Take more action so that the dream can get, give you good results. If it's a negative dream, take action to cancel. If it's a good dream, take action. Are we, are we together to bring it to pass? The last one is Tim Matthew chapter 2, and verse number 19 and 22. And, but when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph. This was in the New Testament. So we say, um, we are in the New Testament. We are not concerned with dreams. Well, you know about it for me. So long you are a living soul, you are a human being, you must have a dream. Because not all are prophets. All right? Since not all are prophets, all are human. All have soul and spirit. And the only way God can communicate our stubbornness, according to Job chapter 33, is for him to bring instruction to us in our dream. Are it good? If you are watching the telecast, you are the reason why I'm speaking. So after this telecast, sit down and check. What dream have you had five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago? What have you done? What are you, what's happening now? Now, some of the dreams I'm talking about are dreams you cannot forget, but you did not do anything about them. And today you are facing the challenges. I pray for you that grace to take over your dream and repair it and restore yourself back to what God wants you to be shall come upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ. The last one I was saying, Matthew chapter 2, verse 19 to 22. And God, uh, Joseph had a dream in the night and saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which shot the young child life. Joseph was not aware that, that um, Herod was dead. Yet, God went in a dream to tell him, look, that's what we call informational dream. The other one he had for us was instructional. This one is informational. Take the child. Your, the enemies are dead. You cannot go back to the land of, of, uh, of Israel. Verse 21. And he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. Verse 22. But when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judah, in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go to Notwithstanding, being one of God in a dream, he turned aside into the part of the Galilee, and he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that they might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, he shall be called a Nazareth. Praise God. Now listen very well. That man obeys his dreams, but even when he became afraid of, what if I obey this dream? He decided to move to the corner, and that corner is part of God's agenda for that um, action time. I, I want to let you know. When you decide to take an action on your dream, he got part of that action will be in place. In case God really wants to be part of it, when you are taking those actions, it will not be wrong. I pray for you, you will not take wrong action. Let's take two examples. Um, St. Renan Bonke, many of us know Renan Bonke, great evangelist. One of his dreams, he said, when he was a young man in Germany, he had a dream as he was... Um, in the beginning of his ministerial career, his father was a pastor. He wanted to minister, and then they were, they were hindering him because of his level of education and English. I cannot speak. 
But one day in his fast, he got a dream, and he saw blood flowing on African nations. And he said, he had in that dream, Africa shall be saved. And after that, he came to Africa. And all of us, whether we are young or old, can testify that from Africa, he ruled, he reigned, he made, preached Jesus, like he said. He came here and preached Jesus, and the whole world got get connected to it. It was a dream. It was not a vision of the day. It was a dream he had. We have also heard of some of our fathers that had 18-hour dream, and they got a mandate. And all of us cannot deny the mandate is speaking. Recently, I had a young man. He was testifying in a church. And in her dream, he's 10 years old. A, a giant elephant was pursuing him. He was running. And then in the dream, he heard that the pastor used to say, you shall not die like a chicken. And he began to say it. He began to say it. And he woke up from that dream. Now, he didn't stop there. This is the action part of it. He went on to share testimony on the church platform that he had a dream. And he's thanking God that God gave him grace to remember what the pastor used to say in the church, even in his dream. And that's what caused his escape. And he shared the testimony. And the same pastor heard it. And the pastor prayed for him again. That was an action that cannot allow the spirit of death, killing people in his father's mother's house, to kill him. Why? He had a, a dream. He took action in the dream. He woke up and took physical action by testifying to the church that the man of God that has authority over his life can speak. Maybe you are watching telecast. You are saying, Pastor, I've heard you say it. What then shall I do? Number one, number one, when you wake up from your dream, you will speak to your dream as you wake up. Number two, take action. How many action? Continuous action until you are convinced that the dream is set. If it is physical, a uh, good positive dream, then you take more, more, more action. If it's negative dream, some of the dream can require you three days fast and prayer. Some of them can require you one day or two days dry fast. But take action. Speak the word of God. Take action. Obey an instructional dream. If it's an instructional, obey it. You are instructed to do like this. Obey it. And finally, only those who are children of God can really understand the power of their dream. Maybe you are watching telecast. You are not born again. You want to have the power of God upon your life. You want to surrender your life to Jesus, please lay your hand on your chest. Just simply pray after me. I know there's nobody on earth that does not have a dream. There's nobody that does not sleep. And when you sleep and you woke up from a dream and you don't do anything about it, you are just endangering your future. Say after me. Lord Jesus, I heard your voice. Have mercy on me. Forgive me of my sins. Write my name in the book of life. From today, I confess you as my Lord, our personal Savior. I repent of all of my unrighteousness. In Jesus' name, I'm a child of God. I am born again. So shall it be. Jesus' name, prayer. I want to pray for that person that I've just prayed that prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for as many that have given their life to Christ this day. And I pray, Lord, you renew their spirit, soul, and body, and every information needed for their life to become good. You will give them through their dreams. And the grace to obey and treat their dream with full action shall come upon them. Thank you, Father. Jesus' name, pray. All right, God bless you. If you want to call me one more time, my name is Pastor Femi Richwood, and my telephone number is on this video. You follow us, click on follow Femi Richwood, and you'll on Facebook for follow. You will see videos on part one of how to treat your dream, and you will see this. When we come next time, we'll be looking at examples of those who treat their dreams. What are the benefits? You will see them. And then we will end up with those who did not, example, those who didn't treat their dreams. And then we will come up and end up with how to follow your dreams. God bless you. See you next time.